Hello, everybody, in between Heroin Attic and Fantastical Scientist. I'm Perky Purple Platypus, and today we have something kind of in between the two of those. Today I'll be talking about my specific Blight build, um, and my mindset as a rank 1 killer. So, to, to go into it, I'm going to talk about my specific build, what the Blight does, and why it works. First of all, Blight's power. Blight has five tokens. Each time Blight hits a wall, he loses one token. When he has no longer to more tokens, he cannot perform a rush. Now, what does this all mean? Well, Blight's rush is an ability that allows him to move at 240% movement speed. If he wants to extend the duration of this rush, then he must hit into a wall bouncing off of it. To, after hitting a wall, you need to reactivate a rush, consuming a token. After you consume one token, the Blight is able to make an attack while he is rushing. This is known as a lethal rush. Very basic power. However, the amount of mobility and accuracy and map control that it gives Blight is incredible. It's probably among the best in the game. And because of that... I put on Tinkerer, which tells me when a gen reaches 70% completion. Once a generator completes, uh, reaches 70% completion, then I also, my red stain and my heartbeat do not show up to survivors for 16 seconds. This allows me to dash across the map and um, stop the gen progression. Once I get to the gen, I get them to stop working on it. It will start regressing at 200% of its normal regression speed, which is normally one-fourth the speed that survivors can work on it. So about, it will regress at half the rate that they can work on it. This is a hex, so if they find my hex, this perk is uh, unusable. And because of that, I put on hex undying, because I have three hexes, and the chances are they'll find one of them at the start, because there's only five in the trial. So, also it's incredible for sometimes finding survivors, because they might happen chance go four meters uh, within a, a, any totem, or hex, and uh, it will highlight them for me, and show me their aura across the entire map. So, what the totem is actually or what this hex is made to do, is if any um, hex is um, destroyed, it will be transferred to Hex Undying, or they destroy Hex Undying, then they destroy Hex Undying, and I still have my two other totems. So it's, it's, a, it's a safety totem. Next we have Devour Hope. If they unhook 24 meters away from me, I gain a token. First two tokens, 5% mobility. Um, this doesn't seem great, but it can actually help you in really tight situations where you normally wouldn't get the hit. Uh, the hit. Let's say they're going for a pallet or a window. It allows you to, to get those um, ones around tight corners that Blight normally struggles with. At three hooks with your main attack, not lethal rush. It doesn't apply with lethal rush. That's a, that's a thing that took me a little bit to notice. Um... You can you can insta down them with your main attack, which is incredibly incredibly strong for ending chases. And at five tokens, you can take any survivor that's on the ground out of the game by instantly killing them. Blight's Mori, I believe, is 13 seconds. So in those 13 seconds, you can just eliminate someone. Now it should be noted that that will not go towards your sacrifice um, medal, and it will actually probably hurt it. But if you're only focused on winning. Uh, it's it's fantastic. Now, the reason I have Devour Hope on this build is to punish them for not looking for my totems. Or, if they get Rune, I still have another totem. Because it's it's not li like common to be running three hexes. So that way, I always have a hex going that really has something going for me. And once they notice Devour Hope, you'll get them off gens. And if they haven't started it, then Rune will start triggering and just... I I'll snowball. So, that's the build, and, um, yeah, let's, let's hop into a game. Alright, so we've made it into the main lobby. So, you can actually learn a lot from the main lobby. First of all, you can determine, like, how probable they are good. 
Um, all you can also determine if they're on a console or PC. If they have a symbol, that means they're on console. If they, ha you can also see what items they have. They're bringing two flashlights, which stun me. So I need to be aware of that when picking people up. Pyramid Head, um, and um, I think it's only Pyramid Head that can really avoid flashlights, which is fantastic. Um, Trapper can slightly trick them, and so can Hag, and maybe uh, the pig too when she's putting a trap on their head. But other than that, you need to be incredibly, incredibly, incredibly careful um, if you see flashlights. Um, you should also watch out for keys, toolboxes, and any other thing, but I think that's given. Um, we didn't see any offerings. If we saw any offerings, maybe it would tell us a bit more information, but we didn't see any. So now I'm just going to wait to get into the game. It's going to take a little bit longer than it should because we are playing with some console players and their load times for the maps are a bit um, longer than um, my my huge PC. Alright, so we are on Haddonfield, which is a horrible, horrible, horrible map for killer. So... <laughs> Based off that, we're going to have to try and find someone quickly. I think they might be in this house, yes. They were. Gun them off that gen, I don't know where they went. Shouldn't dwell on this too much. There we go. Tinker activated, we're gonna head over there. Damn, we not, not, not make it now. Yep, alright, so we can assume that three of them were on that based on how long it took Tinkerer and that perks to go off. Alright, that was a little basic mind game, very surprised they fell for it because they didn't change my light. However, they did. They got one of my totem totems, which means I currently no longer have Hex Undying, which is quite unfortunate. I see someone coming for the save, so I'm going to point my head down so they cannot flashlight me. They went this way, so I'm going to bounce over this. Okay. Seeing that I would lose a rush token, I didn't take it there, because it's better to have it when I can see them. I'm just going to down them in the case that they have decisive strike, so I'll just leave them on the ground, and someone will have to go and heal them. Uh, i got to quickly find the, another survivor. <laughs> Gonna listen, don't hear it near. They got a hex totem right here, so I know they're here. I can't make that. The next rush token and the awake rush token, so I will just walk. I hit them. They're gonna drop that pallet. I'm not gonna break it. I'm going to hit this person for new pressure to switch targets uh, because it might take them a bit longer. I shouldn't have done the brush there. That is a bad choice. I should have just taken it. If yeah. So they're going to probably drop that pallet. They didn't, that was really foolish. I need to fake this. No one's coming. I know they're doing the generator over here. Or I heard a generator. So I'm going to hook back here. 
I know I lost Var Hope from that um, hex, and that means I only now have rune. I don't think they'll be expecting me to run three totems, so it should be fine. Um, yeah. I'm gonna rush over here. I found the driver, but for some reason I didn't collide, so now I'm not going to get the rush on them. Um, Steve. I'm gonna go for her because I can fly more pressure by hitting her. I'm gonna slightly slug her, look for Steve. See if I see him. I don't. I'm going to go for um, another hook. Maybe I can put it near another hook near her. I know Steve is now going for Meg because. Yep, there it is. Um, Tinker though. So I am going to rush towards that gen. What the hell? Because I know it's far more important to get them off the gen. It wasn't actually Steve that went for the... I missed that. It's fine. Because I'll be giving it back very shortly. Uh, Steve is running me... I can break that pallet. Please will rush. Steve's just running me around this generator. I see it's still progressing, which means no one's on it. Steve's just letting me uh, shred the pallets, which is fantastic. I had a driver around the corner, and maybe he would be there, but he was not. Someone, I believe... No, no one's working on that generator. I'm going to leave Steve and look for a new one, maybe get them off a generator. Uh, Steve's going to continue running, probably out of confusion, which will keep them off gens for a little bit. They're not in this house. Um, my next best guess would probably be somewhere like the basement. So, I'll listen to see if I can hear it from here. I can, they're here. So, I'm going to attempt to chase them. There we go. It's a little sliding trick you can do with the... Um... She's up there. I'm applying a lot of pressure because this is also a gem they're working on. Hi. Um, since I know she's there, I know she can't get the flashlight save if I stick my head more towards the ground. That has severely regressed, which is fantastic to me. They finally got my rune. So, rune has worked as a job to slow down the game. I'm gonna hit this generator off of it. I think they're still here. I'm going to assume they are. Check the closed locker. Not there. Um. I'm going to run back to this generator because I saw something here. And I know I can't it, so I'm going to. Uh, Steve's nearby, so I'm not going to be touching that generator. She had life, we should put that in the notes, which means she has will run 150% faster after vaulting. And or quick vaulting something. I know Steve's gonna be on that generator. So I'm gonna quickly check it. Steve. was on a generator. I'm going to rush back here. That worked so I rush just there. I thought I could curve it enough. I couldn't. Um, so, seeing that that gen's almost done, and I really, really, really do not want that. I'm going to... Alright. I guess I will... defend this hook, then. On where they were. I know Steve is here. Steve's gonna be right about 
here. Yeah, he's he should drop this pallet, this loop round. Yep. Anticipating that, I'll do a quick break on that pallet. I'll quickly chase Steve. He didn't expect me to be capable of uh, changing my direction like that. I'll block this pallet. Ah, oh, I thought I could anticipate the dead heart and delay the hit slightly. It didn't work. Uh, he's going to be going for this pallet. I'm going to just use a lethal brush to break it quickly. Then, uh, since I get back almost immediately, and there... Damn. Alright, Steve, I'm leaving you. I'm going to contest this generator. That way I get a grab off of them. And she's dead, which is really, really big. I hit this because she's still right here. Pallet. Someone's working on that again. Which means I have eight of them. I somehow missed that hit, which is pretty devastating. Um, someone will be coming back for us. I get the hit on that. They might come for the pallet save. They were not fast enough, so that's two downs for me. It's fantastic news. I'm going to slug it, assume she's going to try and finish that generator, and haul my ass back to here. I'm going to hit this. And rush quickly back to Steve. She's here. I'm not going to get the heal off, I'm going to hit her and that'll be game. Yep. That is a slight trick. She's going to hopefully vault that. Yep. So now she's going to walk slightly slower because you vaulted up. How did she dodge that? Alright, that's game. Uh, we know Steve doesn't have Unbreakable, which is very, very fortunate for us. However, we do have to find Steve now. He could have basically crawled to anywhere. However, seeing that there's bloodstains here and that bush just moved, we know he's right here. Very unfortunate, Steve. And then this right here will be game. I'll probably be playing one more just so we get um, you know, a, a smaller group and a different map so you can see how light might work somewhere else. Um, I didn't hit a lot of my rushes, and as you can see, um, Blight's just powerful enough where that's, that's not a huge effect. As you can see, we almost double picked, um, which is quite surprising. Apparently, I didn't chase enough, which means I probably ended my chases too quickly. Um, this is a bit of a newer lobby, seeing that we got a 12 and an 8 and two threes, so it was uh, a bit more um, sided towards me. They made some very, very questionable decisions at some points. Alright, so it seems that we got the coal tower. 
Um, this time I will be recording afterwards. My audio got corrupted. So downside of Coal Tower is that um, hexes are in like just in incredibly obvious places. I see scratch marks over here, so I'm going to chase them. Uh, they probably went around this corner, and there they right up are. Um, it is not my obsession. I can check that by seeing the tentacles. Uh, they're, they should have dropped the pallet here. Uh, they do, they should do it here. Um, they didn't check if I was going to keep running, which resulted in me getting in the hit. I can now use a lethal rush, as I got the main basic hit. I'm going to assume they're going this way. I know they went this way, and hopefully with the fifth hit, I can hit them. I notice this is actually a different target, and I notice she's working on the gen. It's better to get, uh, gen pressure, so I, I get both of them off the gen. Uh, strangely, and seeing that I can just quickly change targets, I look at her to, to make it seem. Since I notice he's hiding and he's not going to get away, I go for the secondary hit to get the freak down. Um, I gotta be careful of flashlights because there was one in the post-game lobby that I see, but seeing that I got that notification, that means they just fall through the window. I saw scratch marks right near that window, which means they're probably near the gem, and there they are. Since she's gonna unhook right here, I'm not gonna get a stack of our hope, but I do get a free hit, which is really nice. He dropped the pallet to the right, which means I also get that just out of the way. I'm going to actually destroy this breakable wall because I suspect she was in the middle of the room. This pushes her to the right, and she's going to go all the way back to uh, upstairs, I believe. I, for some reason, got confused, and I look at the locker. Um, she somehow snuck past me. I think she slow vaulted the window or walked behind me. Um, to, so she can't loot me here, I destroyed that one in the back, forcing her to go to that pallet. I slid off the car because the car has terrible collision, but um, I do get the pallet out of the way relatively quickly, which means she can no longer loot me there. I'm going to chase her this direction, and I notice the gem that's going off is actually the upstairs one. I thought it was that one over there, which is not the case. I have to make a choice of one of them. I'm closer to this one, so I go for it. That was actually the right choice, because there was a weak person on it. I had no way of knowing that, but it was an incredibly lucky choice. I want to chase her kind of off the gen. She's going to go right to it, so I know I need to quickly hook. So I run to the, the hook right here, and I have to hope that I can make it upstairs before she can she can finish it. So I head right back up. I should I'm not, I didn't make it in time. She finished the one upstairs, which was a fantastic move by her. For some reason, I think she's around the boxes. She isn't. I think she actually jumped down. She got the unhook, which means I don't get a stack of our hope, which is um, pretty pretty bad. However. Um, I, I thought it would have got a hit there, but it seems that they have borrowed time, um, which is incredibly good to know. I should get this down relatively quickly, but they made a sharp turn, which is White's weakness. Um, I think I can do a quick mind game here, and if I walk backwards, we should align again. I see she's going that way. I assume she's rolled the window. She doesn't. So, what I do is I go to the gen, and I hit him. That's a quick down right there. I know there are some people here. So, I pick him up, quickly walk him to a hook, because I know they can't finish the gen in time. They're going to try to. I hear a flashlight to my left, so that means I know that there's three of them here. I see the scratch marks there. I see the gen is in progression. I get that quick down. I wait to try and fake the pickup, because I heard the flashlight earlier. There she is. She's going... And since I just hit her with a basic attack, I can get just a quick lethal rush hit, and I've applied a enormous amount of pressure. Um, I see her, and I could end the game right here, but seeing that they can't recover from this position if I get another hook, I decide to try and chase her away, and then get another hook. Because uh, that will be just far more devastating, because it, it has a less likelihood of me messing it up which I could very well do. So I decide to take the, the safer play and to go for the hook. I They should be going for the unhook, which gives me a snack of our hope, which is exactly what I wanted. So I quickly leap and rush away to get my second stack, so then I get the slight speed boost. Um, 
I noticed I was incorrect, and I hear her, so I just I just swing, because I know she's nearby and I can find her. I see she's right there. My devour hope's not going off, so I'll just I'll just loot this pallet. I want to get rid of it, so then there's just none on this side of the map, and they have nowhere where they can go. Uh, she tries to actually uh, spin on me. She's not fast enough, and I get down. They should be unhooking him now, which should give me that stack of devour. Uh, since they don't, I decide to kind of hook them close together, so then I can, uh, get the, the double proc, or at least, uh, camp them, because it would be far more beneficial not to. I actually go away to encourage them to get a quick double hook, so I can get all three stacks. If you listened very carefully back there, you could hear a box being worked on. Um... That's how I knew he was there. He was uh, opening a crate looking for an item. Uh, he's dead on hook now, which means I have an unbelievable yeah. amount of pressure. So I'm just going to slap him on the hook that they just took her off. Um, and just turn away so they can't get the flashlight. She tried the body block, but she was too slow. I'll get this, turn around. Missed it again. Uh, that was iffy. I probably shouldn't have gone for that. That's all right. I'm going to attempt to mind game her here by showing my light that way. I have no clue where she went. I see she's right there, and I she got in front of me, and I got confused and a bit um, disoriented. So now I fake my light that way. I didn't do a really good job with this, and I'm just trying to hide my light, hoping that she'll hold the window next to me. It doesn't work. I'll take the free pallet break. Even less pallets on this side of the map is just a fantastic thing. Um, I once again try and do a little wine game. Um, I notice it's not pulling off, so I attempt to leave and go back to the generate uh, generators on this side of the map. Actually, my assumption was correct because this one's 70% junk. The only way they could have done that is if they had two people. My assumption seems to be right. I got Var Hope hit off, and since I know she's going to probably make it to the window if I don't leave lethal rush, instead of trying to go for the insta down, I just decide to go for a health state for the free hit. Um, they're probably looking for Devour Hope now. They haven't found Root either, so they have a 50% chance of finding it. I'm just going to go for the hook. I think this is her second. I place her on there, and I look to where I saw the fat person last. I start... I go towards a totem, assuming that it's Devour Hope, so I wait for the unhook and hope that I can just protect one of my uh, hexes, because I'm in a really good position. Um, I start looking towards other generators. I don't hear anything over here, so I start running back to where they unhook them, because that is my best guess as to where they are. I actually go towards the generator, I see that there are still sparks on it, which means they cannot be on it. I, s I see scratch marks over there, and I think, hey, I'll intersect them at the right. It's far more unlikely. I see scratch marks going this way. I know she's in the jungle gym, so she's accounted for. I guessed right that we intersected here, and since I missed, I just decided to keep rushing. I lost her, so I just... I just take the thing, I have plenty of time, and I follow the bloodstains. The bloodstains lead me to that. She should have gone for the jungle gym, but for some strange reason, she didn't. I attempt to get around or see if she has any breaks. She doesn't really have any way I could hit her in one lethal rush. So I move over here, noticing she's going towards the jungle gym. Um, she's right in the open now, which means I should be able to get an easy hit, but she makes a quick turn. She just makes a quick turn. It's really hard for me to hit her. I can just chase her down at this point with a basic attack, and they'll have the same thing. But since she's in the open and I'm relatively certain I can hit her, I did. She slightly missed time to dead heart, which I hadn't noticed yet, which is fantastic for me, and that should result in a kill. Seeing that that generator is going uh, down, I quickly rush over there, and that should at least account for one of them. I think that might be her, and since I can afford to give up a gen, I chase her. Uh, she didn't heal. 
which is not great news for me. They must have messed up on that generator. If she doesn't have balance landing here, she's dead. She doesn't, and so she goes right now. The generator next to me should be finishing now. There it is. I get the hook, and she's dead. That means that the last person is alive, and I start rushing towards that gen. I see she's over here, she's slow bolting, and I just commit. Because either way, I'm going to get the pallet, or I'm going to get her. Uh, both things would be fantastic, and there wouldn't be pallets on one side of the map. So if I could have... I Apparently, I heard the hatch. It was an opening. It was incredibly faint, but since I was barely out of that range, I'm able to hear it. Um... I don't know why the audio in the game didn't pick it up, but since I saw her going for Killer Shack, and I knew there's a pallet at Killer Shack, and that would probably be the safest place she would go, because her other choice is the open, I decided to just commit and go for the pallet. Um, therefore giving me the hook, and that's the end of the game. The, I um, didn't really manage my Devourer Hopes well, and I didn't really utilize the perk, but it did probably... Um, get them off gens quite a bit because they were looking for it or at least applied somewhat pressure and fear i just ran over here at the end to break the pallet for my own satisfaction and 100 blood points um i got ruthless killer because apparently my chase chases were too quick or maybe it was the slugging or the um getting the person with three hooks at the end um, let alone that was a pretty good game, and I appreciate you watching this video. My next one will be Pyramid Head, and, um, yeah, it seems this match we had some new people, and thankfully we, um, we didn't take that skeleton key. So, watch out for Pyramid Head, and I have a comparison of my Huntress and maybe someone else's. Uh, he's a much better Huntress than me, and hopefully he will agree to lend me use some of his footage. I will see you in the next one.